YouTube and uh, on Facebook Live. So I want to welcome everybody. Um, the, uh, the panelists today uh, include Steve Hoffman, uh, who is going to bring us an inside from uh, the 1870s. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is going to get weird real fast. <laughs> yeah, right, absolutely. Uh, we've got Isaiah White, who has coffee of the day. Start. 20 ounce triple zebra almond roca mocha breve. Oh my gosh. <laughs> See, that's just, that's just the stuff I talk about. It's just we're just taking it too far. <laughs> Being that's from right. Washington. Five I of those really words had nothing to do with coffee. Coffee. Yeah. That's right. Well, what does it taste like? Um, it's actually pretty good. So it's 20 ounce triple. Mm -hmm. uh, so the three shots of espresso balance out the sweetness a little bit. But it's got white chocolate, dark chocolate, a half a shot of almond roca, and breve, which is half and half. Ooh. So it's, so it's a creamy, smooth, strong, sweet coffee. So it's got two of the major food groups in it. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to apologize to all the people that I've made fun of that work at Starbucks. That's some serious collaboration of different flavors. I was a bartender. It's just like, well, yeah, no I didn't know coffee really knew that. I'll tell you what. I, was I know Starbucks. We, they, they have got problems. They probably wouldn't walk in this room. Uh, well, that's true. Okay. That's true. I mean, we would be, you know, I would, love, I would love for them to walk in this room. Let yeah. me put it that way. Oh, that's true. Uh, all right. Now. Uh, we've got one of our favorite people that we're going to be making a phone call to. Uh, she couldn't be live. Mandy Wilkes. Mandy Wilkes, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm Chad Caton, by the way. Uh, oh, oh, the co-host of <laughs> this the, guy. The whole thing. Well, you know, I, everybody knows you. you no, know, they don't. Know. They, 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 come on. <laughs> you walk down the thing and people walk on the other side. They, and they know the thug firefighter. I got yeah. guys. There's Chad. <laughs> don't talk to the people in my HOA. Way different person. Oh, yeah. I, the medication isn't uh, flowing quite. No. I, I didn't have enough CBD oil this morning. Um, <laughs> okay. Did uh, you see the video I posted? Which one? This guy has a dog that has seizures. Yes, yes. I am stupid about my dogs, Buster and Buddy. Hey, guys. I love my dogs. And I'm watching this dog have a seizure. And this guy gives the dog CBD oil. And within 30, 45 seconds, the dog stops these violent shakes. As in, as a somebody's been in an ambulance, an EMT with the fire department, I've seen the people that have these epileptic seizures and whatnot, and it's horrible. Yep. And out in California, people aren't having them anymore. They're giving the the edibles to the kids, uh, and now they're saying that cannabis kills cancer. Yeah, but then afterward, it kind of, you kind of want to rape and kill. You know, I keep looking for that. I, yes. I, I mean, K2, I watched some guy do some really horrible stuff on Facebook on K2. It's a legal uh, synthetic drug. Yeah. yeah. And then if you ever run into somebody on some, on some bath salts, that's interesting. Well, uh, Isaiah's on bath salts all the time. Yeah. He soaks in them and it comes in, it's just it's soft. I, uh, for the record, had Tidepods. You're the reason that thing's locked up with the, with the market. Dave! <laughs> you know, when you walk in, you see all them locked up in the market. I'm like, this is where we're at right now. I, I gotta say, right David now. Hux is in the house. Well, I'll give me a few seconds. <laughs> the original already kind of antagonist. Antagonist, that's right. That's right. You are in the right room. That's right. Fake news. <laughs> The, the lights are blinding. Anyway, <laughs> all right, we're going to give uh, our girl Mandy a call. Uh, we've got to check in on, on her atonement. Um, her we, we, yeah, we, we've got to see how, how well she's doing with her frickin' cussing. <laughs> I, don't, right. I don't think she's doing a damn good job of it. Wait, are so, we in the super block? <laughs> yes, we are. Is this a safe space for cussing? Uh, yeah, just can't do business here. That's the sweet say, if you cuss a lot, you're smart. <laughs> Oh, let's see how this goes here. Production value is amazing, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mandy, how you doing? We're 
doing great, but we've, we've understand you've been suffering for hundreds of thousands of hours having to do your atonement. So what's the hell your problem? <laughs>
Redneck Riviera. I love that. Well, that, that, that's it. And then this is what uh, this is what this beach actually was built on. Um, this is uh, the foundation. And um, to I don't know these people that have these visions of changing and becoming what you're not. <clears throat> anytime that there's uh, uh, outside interference on what naturally grows up from from what people do always reverses itself and implodes. But I guess we see it all the time. It keeps happening. But uh, again, they keep they keep pushing and trying to do this. But we're going to all fight to see if we can. But we can't preserve. have stores selling things to people that they really want. Oh, good lord, no. I mean, that's called uh, what capitalism? What happened to our community? free market? Especially CBD lollipops, they don't do those anymore. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Manny, I got a question for you. Um, I I follow your 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 page uh, diligently. Um, there's been there's been a <laughs> <laughs> and it's your fault. <laughs> well, Manny, it's, you've kind of taken the pressure off of me, so I, I appreciate it. Um, there there's been and I I've got to ask you since we we have. Uh, people watching. There's been statements in regards to anti-Semitism, um, in regards to the overlay, and with the stores themselves, how they look, like you said, with the neon signs. And But all of the signs and the front frontage of your stores, are they not in compliance with city ordinance?
it, it, it does. It does. And before I, I let you go, I do want to ask you, maybe ask everybody on the panel, um, uh, uh, our, our mayor has put out this big thing about how she's rubbing shoulders with the muckety mucks in, uh, in D.C. and um, she's going out and um, trying to get grant money or something like that. Is this really something that needs to be done um, at this point in time with all the problems that we have going on, on at, the, at the beach? I mean, is she really doing anything or is this just a, a PR thing so she can do a junket and get her, her picture next to these other people so she can try to get into the next level of politics? I don't know, what's your opinion? Uh,
especially something that took three years. Sit there and work on content. It seems like every week we get just filled 
and I have to I actually have to filter out what we can we can talk about um, one of the things in, uh, you know this is Isaiah was like oh good we're gonna talk about that uh, one of the things was that the Myrtle Beach street crimes arrest 17 in connection to city prostitution I don't know if, if anybody got to, to see this and I looked through the uh, I actually had to look through the photographs I did not see Julia Roberts in any of no. them no I mean yeah. woo <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, that's, I can deal with it. That's a pretty lady. Uh, yeah. I guess I'm the medical professional. Meth, heroin, 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 meth, meth. I mean, uh, and then I saw... Drugs are bad. Yeah, I saw it was like five different uh, government agencies that were in, con you know, uh, conglomeration to for the bust and everything else. And I'm... Libertarian standpoint. I'm sorry, these are people that have, most of these are people that have a problem, right? And are engaged in pretty much a victimless crime. And yet, we, except for themselves as being the victim, and yet we spent so much time and effort in government things to do this. Meanwhile, um, our beds and heads policy here locally ends up being more like lead and heads. Um, it's, I just keep thinking that, that the focus, once again, the government focus is on the wrong thing. Uh, we're so busy policing what, uh, well, what people are actually wanting to go out and buy, no matter how sick it is, uh, and, and, and trying to do this. And, uh, do you think this is part of the making Myrtle Beach family friendly? Because I don't think we have a lot of families that are cruising um, up and down Withers Swash when they come to visit us. I, I uh, enjoy her no more. Or, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the party boys will, but at, at the end of the day, I, I don't necessarily agree with what you're saying. I don't believe this is a victimless crime, having been out on the street. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> a lot of these women are actually being trafficked. Okay. Um, so the woman themselves, is, is yes, possibly sick, but who made her sick? Yeah. Um, there's that. I don't know these 15 women um, as to why they are doing what they're doing. Um, but every one of these women is proverbially owned by somebody. That person dictates violence, drugs, and, and so forth. It would be different if, you know, this was a government or a, a ran brothel that we could protect that kind of thing. Not that I'm saying I want brothels in Myrtle Beach in any way, shape, or form. But this is floating out there, um, having been on, you know, an ambulance in the Myrtle Beach, North Myrtle Beach area. It's not victimless. I, I, I believe that's wholeheartedly. One, the person, the person that is buying them, or renting them, I guess it's renting. Mm -hmm. um, that That's... They're probably the vic most victimless person there because they know exactly what they're doing. It's all premeditated. Well, These people, I, we don't know the background and what goes with them. So is it making it family friendly? Hats off to Myrtle Beach. These, don't need, these people don't need to be on the street. Well, I don't know if, if they are. These, one, these women shouldn't have their names and pictures put up on the, on the internet. They should be put into, you know, uh, into programs and safe houses. And then we should put up all the people that they're that brought them into it mm -hmm. up there. Well, that's a that's an ongoing thing, and, and, and I appreciate what you're saying, and I actually agree with part of it. Yeah. The only problem is the way our system is set up. If you go and shoplift at uh, the new Simpson building, you're going to get arrested, and your picture's going to be up. They were arrested for missing their pictures being. Even Senator Rand Paul has commented numerous times on the unintended consequences of law enforcement focusing on victimless crimes. Mm -hmm. It's not just the cost of the policing, the local policing, it costs a lot of money. And are those resources being spent effectively? Does it really reduce crime in the area when you have large amounts of money going after prostitution? That, that, so let me ask you this, Mr. Robert, the other the other cost is, is now that you've caught them, now you have these huge prisons you have to maintain. No, I'm back on board. And a, and a large percentage of the people in our prisons are there for victimless crimes. And that costs a hell of a lot of money. It costs more money to keep 
one person in a prison for a year than it does to send them to a local community college for a year. Thirty-six thousand. That's a lot of money. Okay. Let me wrap my thirty-six thousand. Let me let me wrap my brain around this um, because I hear what you're saying, uh, Steve. We keep using the word victimless, and it, and it and it really isn't. There is plenty of victims that go along with this silliness. The oldest profession in the world. Yes, between consensual adults. Some, but is it? But is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, there's been many outlets here in Myrtle Beach that Myrtle Beach is one of the biggest hubs for trafficking of people. Yeah. So is it? That, that, so we go to that now. So I think by throwing out, and that's the biggest problem with our media, that's the biggest problem with our politicians, that's the biggest problem is that people throw out huge statements to stick on the wall. I don't believe it's victimless. I know what you mean by the concept of victim, victimless. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the prison, we need absolute prison reform. There needs to be, I can't wait for Johnny Gardner to get up there and I can go, I'm going to try to advocate as much as we can for our juvenile issues here. It's proven that the boot camps work. Okay, yeah. They work, a, let's teach them a trade. A lot of these kids are in it because they don't know what else to do. I'm a big fan of kids. I've seen kids. I worked in one of the most ghetto schools in California, in Ventura, California, and coached football for 10 years. I've seen kids get out of there. They need something to put their teeth into and grab a hold of. And these boot camps and being around former military and whatnot and teach them a trade, possibly. And we, they'll be there less time than they would be in the county for the actual crime. It comes to prostitution, we've got way bigger issues here. What is it trafficking? Is it drugs? Obviously it's drugs. I mean, that's drugs. But is it going to be good with additional arrests? Where are the drug dealers being arrested? Where are the traffickers being well, arrested? Traffic if it's not, exactly. then it's really a waste of tax dollars. Who's going after the traffickers? Well, it, it, again, that goes back to what Bethune's, uh, Mayor Bethune's doing. She's getting rid of CBD oils and everything because it doesn't work on her agenda. Um, if we arrest all the prostitutes, then the traffickers have nobody. And how many of these women will stand up in the middle of jail and say, thank you, I've been trafficked? Yeah. So by saying it's a waste of tax dollar milk, yeah, I disagree. I was a church going, honest girl, and then I had CBD oil, and the next thing you do, I'm out there on the <laughs> I took CBD in the morning and I had 13 tall boys. And the tall boys were just getting hydrated. It's higher. I'm just glad I got Steve Hoffman. I'm so saying he's a church girl. I was wondering where you're going with that. This is the first time I've met Steve Hoffman, who I respect really. And I didn't know where that was going. I might have had to pull some Facebook posts. You heard it here first. Anyway, um, I just wanted to uh, give a shout out. September 15th, September 15th. Here at Fresh Brood, right on this stage, uh, they're going to have the World Sober Music Day. Um, go online, uh, check out the Facebook page for uh, Fresh Brood Coffee, and uh, check out the this. We've got some local artists uh, that are going to be performing. We've got uh, some great people here. You really got to come down and check out this venue. Um, it, it's a beautiful uh, place. Uh, Isaiah can tell you they have great coffee. Um, and uh, Zebra Boca, Chaka Laka, the dog. It's <laughs> full kids. Don't forget your free shots. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's no curing in this building. <laughs> Just putting that out there. This is oh. serious coffee joy. Oh, that is. That I got a question about the World Sober thing. Okay. Um, I don't. I know. We just talked about drugs and all that. So uh, this is to promote people that are in fact possibly dealt with something at one time and they are now living a sober life and doing it as, is that what it's around? Or? I believe believe it is. I'm going to have to get all the details uh, from the post. I'm hoping to get uh, some uh, a couple of the artists and, and so on um, uh, to give me some more information on it. I was hoping to get some, and I'm going to tell them right now, I want bumper music. I want to have intro music from local artists and stuff instead of having to go up online and, and grab, uh, what do you call it, the, the, uh, the the free music uh, that I can go ahead and use and, and wrap around with stuff. Um, well, the reason I ask that too is that, you know, if there's somebody out there that is dealing with something and may want to talk to somebody in a better setting, yeah. you have you have people here that have, have gone through it, are promoting a sober day of uh, music, um, and you have some secret mocha lattes, and <laughs> they're amazing. Right. 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 Sorry, right. Right. 
Um, and just come up and sit down as somebody I, I've, I've worked with. Do we have to lock these frappe? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> See, you, you can get into a libertarian once. Okay. Now, no, we'd like it a lot today. <laughs> okay. The coffee shop. Now I'm going to sneak in this little thing. Uh, Lazarus got a little uh, sneaky on his, uh, on his final days here. Should I refuse myself? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, roll 5e5. Five 5e5. Five. Five e five. <laughs> yes. Um, but uh, he and his buddies uh, uh, went through and um, amended uh, some things uh, last minute on a, uh, on a proposal uh, for development up uh, toward the Longs area. Uh, and they pushed it through in the county. Um, is this There's going to be a third reading. Is there so it's not finished uh, next Tuesday. Uh, can they kick, can they kick this down the, the road to, to get rid of this lane duckery and um, I, I what do you call it crony lane duckery? Um, uh, this is lame duck season, I believe. Oh yeah, wow. 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 Two new seasons I didn't know about. The silly season, as Mr. <laughs> Lazarus would say, where we call people names, and then this season. Um, the way I understand it, and um, I have since got involved in this. Um, there's firefighters, police that are, are, are significantly worried about this. Um, there's a lot of infrastructure, and when people talk infrastructure, I think it's something that's thrown around in Florida, or, uh, not Florida but um, Washington a lot as to roads. Well, there's roads, police, fire, municipalities, um, we got water. Uh, these are going to be paid for by the tax people, our taxpayers, and what I understand is Mr. Wooten, besties with the county, He's offered $500 per home as an infrastructure penance to shut people up for this infrastructure because it's a real thing. Um, $500 is nothing. I, I'm under good, uh, I have a friend of mine that I have talked to um, that I'm sure you'll be hearing about soon. I'm going to leave that, but he's a professional. And the average is anywhere from twenty dollars to $50,000 per home as part of an area with no infrastructure itself already. Yeah. I always talk optics. I'm a big fan of perception. And the perception of this in uh, our county, especially with our new Johnny Gardner chairman going in in January, sure seems like a lot of meetings are going really fast at really good times. And it seems like a lot of money is being allocated towards things right now, right now before we have the new administration come on board. It's, uh, the optics and perception are bad. And yeah. we're going to be able to refute that here in the next couple of days and really show it. Yeah. And I can't wait. I'd like to, you know, if I ever had enough time, just to take uh, the amount of money that has been allocated, passed, whatever you want to call it, from the uh, day of election to when he leaves office. Oh, it would be amazing. Yeah. Um. Because, uh, and, you know, it's not fair, I mean, I, it, there's not a threat or a for, uh, uh, forewarning or a foreboding on this. This is just, this is fact. This is what we have to do as citizens just to, to keep you all in check. Um, I know you don't like it. You don't like it when, um, and I'm talking to the, the, some of the people that are in shadow government that don't like to have uh, illumination to it. But uh, this is the thing, this is what our duty is, is, is citizens. In, uh, in line with Rule 5A5, I think what we need in the future is more discussion on uh, impact, development impact fees. Mm -hmm. that, that may help to clear the air and uh, to bring some of these issues to the surface. Yeah, well, they was discussed. There was uh, even a poll as out. Um, here's the thing, and this is where I've come into this light in Horry County. I'm sorry, Mark Lazarus, Reed County. Um, he said I don't say Ori County, right? Um, Ori. I was told it's Uri, Ori. I think Ori. I'd be pretty good with it, but at the end of the day, I just want to be right. Um, my biggest problem right now is that, and then why I came into it, why I went um, to see Mr. Lazarus at Burgess, why I stood up, said I wouldn't sit down, why I tried to to bring it open is because there's this lock on the information and anybody that puts that information out in a negative light, be it <coughs> our bloggers, 
Um, now we've got our own news being attacked. Uh, 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 regular news, Sun News, uh, a reporter was attacked um, for doing her job because of a prior story. God, I would love to have her on. Um, we, they try to lock down the media. And I'm going to say this, and I've never said it out loud other than to people in my circle. I was interviewed by multiple radio or, uh, television stations, filmed. I had the picture on my phone. Never did they run. That's why I did Burgess. I'm not saying that anybody locked down the media, but it's just really weird. The six people that I talked to in regards to these reports, two of them became PIOs, two of them became anchors, one moved, and the other one, well, I won't go into why he didn't move up, but <laughs> at the end of the day, it's, they want to shut down this information. And when, when people like us come out, uh, Mr. Hux comes out, or uh, Paul Gable, or any of the other bloggers out there, and Dunham, it, it all comes down to, <laughs> they're stupid. These guys are crazy bloggers. They're just fake, fake news. news. <laughs> and they were mad at me because I said they couldn't park there or whatever. It's just, it's really pathetic. But you don't understand, a free press has always been dangerous to the well-intentioned, good-intentioned efforts of our government. <laughs> it's, I'm from the government and I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. <laughs> That's right. That's, thank you for breaking that down. He said it very articulately. Um, for those of us that don't really get that, it's basically saying my, the government is end all be all. Um, and the county council is, there's some people that I feel that are, are coming on board with Johnny Gardner on that council. Um, that's where you got a six to five vote. Yeah. This council is famous for being across the board. This is a problem. This was thrown down their throat, the people's throat. And by the time the ch old chairman is gone, Chairmen coming down the road are going to have to deal with this infrastructure, and it's going to come on us. Yeah. There's no, that's not fake news, that's not no way to flip it around. We, we can't go to the HOA and say, hey guys, you, you forgot the infrastructure. Yeah. It's not going to happen. This was slammed out our throats, and I, anybody out there, please, my Facebook's Chad Caden, C-A-D-O-N. Follow the money. If anybody can give something based on the follow the money, I guarantee you, it's an ugly, ugly thing. Even though I'm the vice chairman of the Orange County Republican Party, I believe I am allowed to say good things about some of our politicians. Absolutely. And I'd like to say thank you, Tyler Servant. Even though I campaigned against you, you're doing great things in the Orange County. Yeah. And I want to put this out. Tyler Servant reached out to me right after um, the election and whatnot. Uh, Johnny Vaught also did um, because they wanted to know where I was coming from. I told them a lot of things that they didn't know because the information didn't get it on its way up. Because it's a totalitarian government, there's one person at the top, the administrator, who dictates to what goes to the trade, uh, council. And Tyler Servant, I, I've been nothing but so impressed from that point on. And he's actually pushing out real conservative values. Um, Johnny Vaught is somebody that I've talked to a lot. Um, I consider him a conservative, but I don't know where this book made sense to him. 5v5. 5v5. <laughs> Just uh, as we're wrapping things up, uh, I do want to reach out to some of the people that did uh, uh, ask me to bring in a few other uh, topics, and I apologize we didn't get to those today. Um, football season's on us. Um, some of the folks are going out to the, the high school games. Uh, some people want us to talk about the clear backpack or the clear bag rule. People, women can't even bring in their their uh, purses to the games anymore. Oh, um, regular people. That's regular students. people, yeah, going into the, to the games. Wow. Um, uh, I wasn't able to, to address that. Uh, we wanted to get to uh, talking about um, ah, uh, privatization of uh, management of the convention center. We'll get to that at another time. Um, I think that is a great idea, and I'll try to put through uh, some of the uh, studies and so on that uh, go to support that. Um, uh, man, we've got... Uh, way to go, Mandy. So, yeah, way to go. <laughs> a pretty distraction. T-shirts and neon signs <laughs> blew our whole show. <laughs> Thanks a lot. But I don't want anybody discouraged. Still, send me that stuff. We need to, to get your input. We want to discuss the things that you want to hear about. And we also want to things, talk about the stuff that make us laugh and, and, uh, and we think it's fine. <laughs> so. And feel free to... Tell us what you don't like. <laughs>
And, yeah, please. Exactly. Yeah. And, and there's nothing I can do about my looks. So that's all there is. But thank you again. Tune in next uh, Friday. Uh, Chad, you'll be back co-hosting. Um, Maybe. We've got to do something about my green room, but yes. Okay. Well, and I, I can offer something on real quick. Oh, go Yesterday on. was my mother and father's 38th anniversary. Happy anniversary. Mom, Dad, I love you. Oh, you did gosh. okay raising me. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. Happy anniversary. I'm sorry I wasn't around yesterday. Now, you month. have, uh, what, a month or so? Uh, some events coming up? Um, maybe not. I don't know. I, I thought you had. I thought you had some some uh, big events coming up in a few months. Oh, I do it's Christmas. Ah, go ahead. Christmas is a big event. <laughs> that me? That's right. <laughs> Uh, thank you all for having me here. Uh, keep in mind, uh, September 15th, next Saturday, in Columbia, South Carolina, will be the Republican Liberty Caucus of South Carolina Biennial Convention. It will start at 12 o'clock. We welcome any guests that want to attend and learn what it means to be a limited government, individual rights, and free market economics type of Republican. There you go. I'm actually going for my first time. Uh, Mr. Hoffman and the triplets, as I like to call them, Peggy, Eva, Sharon. Um, I'm going to go and I'm going to check it out. And uh, I'm, I'm excited about it. And uh, I'm glad I finally got to meet Mr. Hoffman uh, before I go so I don't stay in the room. It's really awkward. Well, the big thing is tune in next week to find out what our coffee of the day is going to be. Hey. All right. Take care, We're everybody. Write that down so I can say it next <laughs>